Hey everyone, Lizelle Crowley here at the Cool Tool Studio. Today I'm going to show you how to use Easy 960 clay to make these rolled edged earrings. I really like Easy 960 for this project because it's nice and flexible and that's what you need to make the rolled edges. Let's get started. So now we're going to make those rolled edged earrings and these are the tools and supplies you're going to want to have on hand. Um, we're going to work with Easy 960 Sterling Silver Clay. I like this clay for this type of project because it's nice and flexible. Uh, and you want good flexibility in your clay to do the rolled edges. We're going to need some thickness frames. I'm, I'm using this particular template for this project, but once you know the technique, you can work with any shape you want to work with. We're going to work with this texture, which is Texture Tile Crackle Fine Line. Um, I love this. I use this texture for a lot of things, but this is what we're going to use for this particular project today. A tough card, a clay board to work on, ultra clay pick, rolling pin, scraper, brush and water, lubricant for your texture. I always like to have a water bottle uh, handy, uh, water spritzer handy. We may or may not need it and for drilling the holes for the earrings, a hand drill. So let's get started. I've got my clay in my Cool Tools hydrator. Now I use this both for long-term storage. It'll keep my clay for months without it drying out. But also when I'm working, I like to put it upside down over my clay and it creates a humid atmosphere so the clay does not dry out as I'm working. So I'm gonna take some clay and roll it out four cards thick. Now I tend not to lubricate my surfaces unless I absolutely have to because I don't like a lot of lubricant getting into my clay as I'm working. Um, this stuck just a little bit but I think it's going to be fine once I texture it. I'm going to lubricate my texture. It's always a good idea to lubricate your texture before you roll your clay out but even if you forget to do that you can still usually manage to get it done in time. I'm going to rub that lube right into the texture. If it's a little too much um, lubricant, I'll rub the excess into my hand, onto my rolling pin, and then I'll dab it up with a paper towel. Now I'm going to lay my clay on the texture, and I'm going to use my two card guide. And this time I'm going to roll with one firm, even swipe to get a nice clear impression. The reason I don't like to go back and forth when I texture is you run the risk of um, losing the clarity of your image that way. And if you can see, I love this texture. It's a really nice overall pattern. And I don't like to use anything too de decorative when I make these earrings because it's really just a contrast to the rolled edges. I'm going to work with this size on the template and I'm going to cut my two earrings out. This is what the clay pick is just perfect for. It cuts through the clay like butter. Okay. Pull away your excess. And this project does not use um, a lot of clay. The clay's giving you a hard time, just kind of run your needle tool through there again. There we go. There's a little crumb on there. I'll just sweep that off to the side. There we go. Okay, the next step is rolling the edges. And for that, I want to use my brush and water. So having the right brush is an important. This is a brush that Cool Tool sells. It's got the perfect consistency for working with metal clay. It's stiff enough that it's going to manipulate the clay when I want it to, but it's not so stiff that it's going to gouge the clay. And this is really, really important. Finding the right brush is um, 
Once you find it, keep it and treat it like gold. So I like to roll the edges individually. So I'm going to move one of these um, off the card, off the tough card for now and put it on another tough card and set it aside. I'm going to wet the side and slide my brush underneath. Okay. And now I'm going to use the brush to lift that side and roll it. And I'm just going to keep working my brush up and down the piece. until I can get that edge to roll over. I don't want to lose the texture in the middle of the piece, so I don't want to touch it in the middle. Okay. And this, this part of the process requires a little bit of patience. But you just get it rolled over. And it doesn't have to be, you know, it's, it's a random process. You're not you're going to let the edge do what it wants to do, in other words. You're not trying to control it too much, but you do want to get it rolled over. And I make rolled edged brings, I make rolled edged cuffs. Um, I do a lot of edge rolling. But the earring is a good place to start. Once you get familiar with how to get that edge rolled, you can really play with it and do a lot of other projects. Okay, so I've got both sides rolled. Now, because this is wet, um, I wouldn't want to press on it with my coil roller without lubricating my coil roller. So I'm going to spray just a little bit of lube on there. And I'm just going to very lightly compress. And what this does is it flattens the top of that rolled edge down a little and perfects the fold and just gives you a nicer contrast between the uh, textured background and the rolled um, upper area. And then the last step is to roll a thin coil. Whenever you're rolling a coil, you always want to start out with nice moist clay. If you don't, you, you're going to have a, a hard time getting a, a nice coil. I'm going to start my coil with my finger. And you see I have a very tiny piece of clay here because I want a nice thin coil. And I'm going to roll that. I need it to be a little longer. If you're rolling a coil and it's not lengthening, you're not pressing hard enough. If you press too hard, it will flatten. So you've got to find that balance in between pressing hard enough but not pressing too hard. Once you get it rolled, you brush it with water and you lay it on your earring. Sometimes it cooperates and sometimes it doesn't, but you can make it do what you want if you're gentle. And I'm just going to put a little curve in it and a little spiral on the end. Okay. Now I'm going to just get a little lube on my finger and lightly press that coil down. Okay, now that'll go in the dehydrator or however you dry your um, pieces. It'll be dried sanded and then I'll drill a hole for the ear wire. And I'm going to do the exact same thing to the other earring. The only difference will be I'll have the spiral on the end going in the opposite direction. Okay, so here's one of the earrings. It's been dried and now I'm just going to lightly sand it. And I like to use a sanding sponge. I'm going to sand around this side edge. It's always good to use a sanding tray to capture your sanding dust. You can turn that sanding dust back into clay or you can turn it into paste. I love this wide brush also for brushing away the dust. And I'm also going to very lightly sand over the top. And that's because I want that 
rolled edge to be nice and smooth in comparison to the textured background so you have a nice contrast in the finished piece. And then finally I'm going to come in with one of these hand drills and these hand drills are fantastic. Um, it's basically a pin, dry, uh, pin vise and you put your drill in the front but in the back it stores all of the different drill bits so you'll never lose them. So I'm going to just take my drill bit and drill straight down and you want to let the drill do the work. You're not trying to punch through, you're just drilling through. And I don't know if the camera can pick it up but you can see these crumbs of clay coming out. And there we have a nice clean hole for the ear wire. So this will be fired, brushed, tumbled, patinaed, and then final finished and we'll attach ear wires. So here we have the finished earrings. They have been fired, brushed, tumbled, patinaed, and satin finished. The satin finish brings out the texture and the contrast between the raised areas and they look really great and I love the way they move in the ear wire. I've also attached a beautiful sterling silver ear wire to them. I think they came out great, don't you? Visit our learning center at cooltools.us for more cool jewelry making videos. Subscribe to our YouTube channel, like us on Facebook, follow us on Twitter, and be sure to sign up for our email list to be the first to hear about new videos, new products, and other cool stuff from Cool Tools.